Good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We are reading in 1 Timothy. Uh, last time we finished reading chapter 3 about overseers and deacons. And now we're ready to read chapter 4. Now I want to look at the end of chapter 3. I think this kind of flows into chapter 4. So I want to read this last verse or two. Let me did I go too far? <laughs> I went too far. Sorry about that. Uh, bear with me just a moment while I have my little technical difficulty. There we go. All right. So, <clears throat> so let's read. Um, let's read the last couple of verses here. This is like the last three verses. I hope to come to you before long, but I am writing these instructions to you in case I am delayed so that you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. And great, we confess, is the mystery, the hidden truth of godliness. He, Jesus Christ, who was revealed in human flesh, was justified and vindicated in the Spirit, seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory." That is the last of chapter 3. Now I'm going to start here in verse 1 of chapter 4, keeping that in mind, and I am reading in the Amplified Bible. Paul continues, But the Holy Spirit explicitly and unmistakably declares that in later times some will turn away from the faith, paying attention instead to, the, to deceitful and seductive spirits and doctrines of demons, misled by the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared as with a branding iron, leaving them incapable of ethical functioning, who forbid marriage and advocate abstaining from certain kinds of foods which God has created to be gratefully shared by those who believe and have a clear knowledge of the truth. For everything God has created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude. For it is sanctified, set apart, dedicated to God by means of the word of God and prayer. So, Paul is concerned, and he has, he has stated this before. Um, he's concerned, or he's reminding us and Timothy that there are going to be, in later times, there's going to be a time where people, you know, are not listening to the word of God. They're not following the word of God, but instead they're going to be deceived and seduced away into the doctrines of demons. So these are going to be lies. They're going to be misled by hypocrisy of liars. Um, <clears throat> people who are incapable of ethical functioning, who forbid marriage and advocate abstaining from certain foods. And we do need to remember <clears throat> that on the earth, everything God has created <clears throat> is good, and we should reject nothing. Now, he's, I think he is really looking at food, um, but also I think you could apply this in other ways to other things, but I think he is you know, specifically meaning food, which he's referred to. You know, but we should receive it. Um, it is sanctified by means of the word of God and prayer. We should receive it with thanksgiving and, and thanking God for it. And I think that's why we say thanks and say grace a lot of times. Uh, it's because you know we should be thankful and, and ask God to bless our food um, because he's the one that created it for us initially. You know, he's our true source of everything, really. When you come right down to it, the, the base source of everything that we have is God. He created it all in, you know, so in the beginning he created it all. And, you know, I don't care. <clears throat> Some people believe that the earth and the world is only, you know, so many thousands of years old. And some people believe it's millions and billions of years old. Now, I don't have a rock solid opinion on that. I do tend to believe the Bible version more than the the <clears throat> theory version, but um, here's the thing. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It all still came from God. 
I don't care if it's thousands of years old or millions of years old. He still created it. He still did it. Um, he got the whole shebang rolling. He set up everything the way it is. So he is our ultimate source of everything. And I, <clears throat> and in that sense, you know, in that sense, just logically thinking, it doesn't matter to me how old anything and everything is or how long everything has been going on. I am just thankful for God and for the fact that he has done all this for us. So, <clears throat> and I, I think that's the way we should be. Um, yeah, it's it's fun to read and theorize and think about those things and try to figure that out. And uh, But, you know, I don't have to be solidly sold on one theory or the other. I can be just, I'm going to believe in the Bible and believe God's word and I guess if God's timeline turns out to be thousands of years, then okay, thousands of years it is. That's fine. It doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong in that. If I'm misunderstanding maybe how that works, it's okay. It's uh, Still, God is the ultimate source, and he's the one that created all that. So, Sorry, I think I'm getting off on a tangent, so apologize for that. Anyway, we should not be rejecting <laughs> anything that God has created for us, because he has created all these good things going to move on to verse 6. If you point out these instructions to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, constantly nourished through study on the words of the faith and of the good Christian doctrine which you have closely followed, but have nothing to do with... Now, let's see. Hold on. Let's stop for a minute. So he says, if you point out these instructions to the brothers and sisters, you'll be a good servant, constantly nourished through study, because it's one of the reasons I, I like doing this Bible study, which is really what it is. I'm not really teaching anything so much as this is a Bible study where I'm reading the Bible and I'm learning as we go, and hopefully, hopefully you are learning as we go. That's the whole idea. So that's why I say I'm not really teaching anything. I'm not. This is all from God's Word. If I'm 100 years old and I'm reading this for the 100th time, I'm still not really teaching anything. We're still studying God's Word and trying to learn from that, you know? Just, you know, that's... I, so I, I find that hard to say that I'm teaching anything. I'm, I really believe that we're learning from the Word of God together and that He's teaching us. So anyway, so he's saying that, you know, you'll be constantly nourished through study on the words of faith and of the good Christian doctrine, which you have closely followed. So, so um, <clears throat> teaching and talking to others about the Lord, and I, again, I use the word teaching, but really talking to others about the word of God and about the Lord and, and encouraging each other to study and, and read and, and look at things, that's a wonderful thing. That's a great thing. It helps keep us fresh and studying and looking and it keeps my curiosity going. It's one great thing about my wife. We'll talk about different things and it keeps my curiosity going. There's some different things I really want to do so like some little studies on and I haven't done them yet but I want to. Um, so maybe that's something we'll do upcoming. Again, I may be getting off track a little bit so let's go on. With verse 7, Paul says, But have nothing to do with irreverent folklore and silly myths. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness, keeping yourself spiritually fit. Now, how do we do that? Through the Word, through study of the Word. And, uh, but he says, you know, don't have anything to do with irreverent folklore and silly myths. Now, I'm going to, I'm just going to say, when I was young, I read a lot of myths. I read the Greek myths, the Norse myths, all that type of stuff, the Egyptian myths. Um, I found those things to be entertaining, but I did not believe in those things. I read them as fun stories to read, as myths. Not the same way in which I read the Bible, which I knew or believed. I didn't know from any physical, tangible proof, but I believed the Bible to be true and real. So when I read the Bible, I wasn't reading it as a myth. Does that make sense to you? I hope it does. But I read a lot of the myths. I was interested in them from a 
curiosity standpoint. Um, and I was young, like I said, I was young. And here he says, you know, have nothing to do with these things. I, I don't know. Hmm. I think, I think in their day back then, people really believed in those things, and it would be easy to be tempted or caught up and persuaded away. I, I was not. I just looked at them as uh, fun stories, kind of like Robin Hood or something. So, but nonetheless, out of the level of importance, okay, if we look at this from, well, what's important? Well, what's important is the Word of God. <laughs> so, in that sense, compared to the Word of God, yeah, I just don't have anything to do with these other things because it's not important. But the Word of God is very important. So, on the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. And he says in verse 8, he continues on, wow, my screen jumped. There we go. Four, physical training is of some value, but godliness, spiritual training, is of value in everything and in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and for the life to come. Our spiritual training, our, the value of the Word of God, the value of learning from God and being more like our Lord, it helps us in this current life and it helps us in the life to come. So it does both. It's important in both ways. And to some degree, because I'm in this life right now, and I know this life is transitory, it's like a vapor and just poof, gone. But because I'm in this life right now, how it helps me in this life right now may be more important than how it helps me in the life to come. Now, it's not more important than my salvation, but because that is the ultimate thing. That is the best thing. But I'm just saying that for right now, the way humans are, the way we have to look at things, we have to be focused on, you know, kind of now. So um, in that sense, that is more important to me. Um, what can I do now to, uh, to maybe to help others? Or what can I do now to learn more about how I should be and to train myself to do better and to be better and discipline myself to be more like my Savior. These things are important to me. And, you know, how do I walk this life, walk through this life following Jesus and not, you know, and not do things incorrectly, do things that would put a bad light on Christianity, but try to always do things so that it would be in the correct way, it would be in the correct manner. There's a lot. There's a lot we have to learn and and do. So, um, so I look at that as for right now, that's more important than than it's not more important than our salvation. That's the most important thing. But but it's more important than than what's going to be happening in the next life because I can't. I don't know enough about what's going to be happening in the next life, and I can't do anything about that that's too far it's i'm a I, yeah, that's what it is i'm one of those people i'm like i will cross that bridge when i get there <laughs> i can't do a lot about it right now so right now i have to take care of the tasks at hand as best i can so that doesn't mean i don't uh don't look forward to um being in heaven and and all i do but i mean i just don't know a lot about what's going to be going on there so um all right, so we can move on. I'm just, you know, I'm just talking. Probably I'm sharing too much. So anyway, so this is a faithful and trustworthy saying, worthy of full acceptance and approval. So oh, oh I want to point out, too, he says for physical training is of some value. Now, we should know that exercise and training and, and doing good things for our bodies is of good value. It keeps us healthy. I think being healthy keeps us thinking better and keeps our, I think it, I think it keeps us emotionally in check too. So I think that's a good thing, especially for guys. I think sometimes I think we need physical exercise to just kind of wear out some of that aggressiveness we have. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to be honest. I think we have. We tend to be a little aggressive, a little, um, I don't know, maybe a little angrier than, than than in general. And so I think physical exercise and physical work 
sometimes it's good to kind of just wear some of that out of you and you're like you know i'm just too tired to be angry and i'm just too tired to be upset i'm gonna try to do what i'm supposed to do and follow the word of god and be uh be you know kinder and gentler about these things um, but when you're so pent up full of anger and aggressiveness <laughs> then it, sometimes it can be difficult to uh to uh be more christianly i will say all right so let me continue on so <clears throat> this is a faithful and trustworthy saying worthy of full acceptance and approval it is for this that we labor and strive often called to account because we have fixed our confident hope on the living god who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe in Him, recognize Him as the Son of God, and accept Him as Savior and Lord. Keep commanding and teaching these things. Let no one look down on you because of your youth, but be an example and set a pattern for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in moral purity. Until I come, devote yourself to public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching the sound doctrine of God's word, do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, that special endowment which was intentionally bestowed on you by the Holy Spirit through prophetic utterance when the elders laid their hands on you at your ordination. Practice and work hard on these things. Be absorbed in them, completely occupied in your ministry, so that your progress will be evident to all. Pay close attention to yourself, concentrate on your personal development, and to your teaching. Preserve in these things, hold to them. No, not preserve. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Feel free to laugh at me. Let me back up. Pay close attention to yourself, concentrate on your personal development, and to your teaching. Persevere in these things, hold to them. For as you do this, you will ensure salvation for both yourself and for those who hear you. So here, Paul is really telling, I mean, this is a good thing for all of us. He's really telling Timothy, you know, keep teaching and commanding these things that, that go with the, the Word of God. That's what he's talking about because he's talking about what he, what he was just referring to. Um... Which is, you know, being, you know, being a good, uh, being a good servant and training yourself well in, in God's word, and then keeping, keep commanding and teaching these things, what you're learning and what you're, you know, you're growing spiritually and you're learning things and keep teaching these things. Let no one look down on you because of your youth. Well, that's the youth does not matter. We can learn a lot from young people. Young people can learn a lot from old people. That is a cycle that I don't see ever ending. He also encourages him to be an example and set a pattern for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and moral purity. This is, this is a big deal. Then this is what, if we are going to set ourselves up as teachers and preachers and we're going to be elders and lead and even deacons, even though we're servants in a way, people look upon us as kind of leaders. But anyway, we need to make sure that we are setting an example and setting a pattern of, of speech and conduct in love and in faith and in moral purity. You know, devote yourself to public reading of Scripture, to preaching and teaching, you know, teaching God's Word. So all of this is very important. Be absorbed completely. And now this says, okay, wait just a minute. Let me read this. This says, be absorbed in them. Practice and work hard on these things. Be absorbed in them. So that your progress will be evident to all. Now one thing they mention up here, and this is in... I want to make sure we note that this was... This is added into this translation. It says, when the elders laid their hands on you. And then in the translation, it says, at your ordination. Now, the early church did not have, I don't think it had real structure and real ceremonies of 
ordination like this this implies this almost implies like a catholic like type of ordination and i understand that that this is a translation but i don't think the early church when paul and them were doing this that there were really such maybe i'm wrong maybe there was such things happening but i don't think there was that kind of uh, structure to the church um the uh, the true church jesus is the lord's church christ church is really um not heavily structured it is loosely structured so that uh, we can live in all the different societies and nations of the world and still be christians and and still recognize and love one another and and love our fellow man without being held to a tightly structured religious and when i say religious in this case i mean a very pharisee type of religion where you couldn't really live in other societies. You would have to live in the one society that you hadn't created. So that was, uh, I think that was part of the Jewish thing, is that they got so strictly um, um, legalistic. Yeah, legalistic that it, you know, it, it's hard if you're very re- legalistic like that to live in, in other societies, in other nations. Instead, we're, we're loosely... Um, we're all under Jesus, okay? But other than that, we're, we're very uh, loosely structured so that, you know, Jesus and God can, can act throughout the world through us. Okay. All right. So anyway, just a thought. And he says, pay attention. Now, this, in this sense, we should pay attention to ourselves that, that we concentrate on our personal development in God's Word. Now, that is always important, and we should do that. Because it does help ensure our salvation and for those who hear us or who see us and and maybe see our example. So that is the end of chapter 4 of 1 Timothy. I want to thank you for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. The Lord bless you and keep you and your family safe. And remember, God loves you.